In this video, we can discuss about hybridoma technology. This technology is used for the production of monoclonal antibodies. So, in this video, we will discuss the definition, different steps for the production and applications of monoclonal antibodies. So, what is monoclonal antibodies? These are single antibodies which are made by fusing antibody producing cell with an immortalized cell line which will result in cell called hybridoma. And this technology was discovered in 1975 by two scientists George Kohler who of West Germany and Caesar Milstein of Argentina. So what is hybridoma technology? As we all know, the antibodies are produced by beta lymphocyte cells. But the beta lymphocyte cell have some disadvantages like it have limited lifespan and uh, it can produce antibodies. And the advantage of a myeloma cell have, these have immortal capacity but do not have any capacity to produce antibodies. And we have to make uh, this uh, myeloma cell uh, with a lack of H HGPRT enzyme that is hypoxanthin guanine phosphoribose transferase. So by combining these two properties, we can produce a cell which have a capacity to produce antibody with lifelong period of or immortality with a uh, capacity of immortality. So, hybridoma technology is a basic concept. Antibody produce beta lymphocyte cell in the capacity. Immortality is lifelong life, immortal life in the myeloma cell in the capacity. Immortal antibody production is a hybridoma cell produce hybridoma technology. So, what is the difference between monoclonal antibody and polyclonal antibody? Monoclonal antibodies are the antibodies that are identical because they were produced by one type of immune cell or beta cells and which will bind to a specific antigen. But polyclonal antibody, clonal antibody or conventional antibodies are antibodies from multiple clones of beta lymphocyte cell and Therefore, they will bind to number of different epitope of antigens. And monoclonal antibody production is expensive, but po uh, production of polyclonal antibody is inexpensive. And it will uh, require long production time for monoclonal antibody. Uh, production of polyclonal antibody is rapid. Large quantity of specific antibody can be synthesized. Large quantity of non-specific antibody are synthesized in case of polyclonal antibody. It can recognize single epitope of an antigen by monoclonal antibody. It will recognize multiple epitopes of antigen by polyclonal antibody. And production is continuous and uniform in case of monoclonal antibody. And different batches may vary in combination. So this is the main difference between monoclonal antibody and polyclonal antibody. So what are the different advantages of monoclonal antibody? Monoclonal antibody are uh, very very specific for their target. So this will bind and this will destroy the specific antigen only. It will not bind with the other antigens. It do not have any intracellular activity. As a result, there is a few anticipated side effect and reaction when compared with the polyclonal antibody. And monoclonal antibody are not metabolized by the kidney or liver, but they are catabolized within the cell resulting in amino acid which are recycled within the body. So these are the advantages of monoclonal antibody. Now what are the different steps for the production of hybridoma technology? It involves 10 stage, uh, steps like immunization, screening of mice for antibody production, Preparation of myeloma cell, then fusion of myeloma cell with immune spleen cell, and selection of hybridomas, screening of the product, cloning and propagation, 
production of monoclonal antibody, purification of monoclonal antibody and characterization and storage of monoclonal antibodies. Let's discuss each step in detail. First step, we have to immunize the animal. Usually we will take mice with an antigen uh, which is specific uh, and uh, against which we have to produce the antibody. And we have to prepare the myeloma cell which is lack with the HG PRT enzyme and do not have any capacity to produce antibody and it have a capacity of immortal life. So we will combine this uh, 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 beta lymphocyte cell which is isolated from the spleen of the mice and we will combine with the myeloma cell uh, by using polyethylene glycol. So we will get a hybridoma cell. So, in order to select the hybridoma cell, we will place this cell in an hat medium, hypoxanthin, aminopterin, and uh, medium, hat medium. So, only the cells or the hybridoma cell which containing gene for HGPRT and the uh, gene for antibody production uh, with immortal growth will uh, live live in hat media and this is assayed for desired antibody production in culture uh, supernatal and this is again recalled by using culture method or by using uh, in uh, in vivo animal method for the production of monoclonal antibodies so coming to the first step that is immunization immunization <coughs> So, in order to immunize, uh, we have to select one animal, usually mouse or mice is used for to produce uh, desired antibodies and it is immunized with the appropriate antigen for every two to three weeks. Then antigen is prepared for the injection either by emulsification of antigen with frauds uh, adjuvants or other adjuvants or by homogenizing the gel silica that containing antigen. Sometimes uh, whole membrane or the microorganism can be used as an immunogen. So we will take the antigen and we will inject into a mice. So that is the first step immunization. Now coming to the second step screening of mice for the antibody production. And this is done to ensure that or in order to measure the serum antibody which are prepared in the uh, mice after immunization. So after several weeks of immunization, blood samples are obtained from the mice for the measurement of serum antibodies. Various techniques like enzyme linked immunosorbent assay is assay, uh, or ELISA is used for the screening of mice for the antibody production. So if uh, by measuring this uh, serum antibody, if the titer is too low, the mice can be uh, boosted until adequate response is achieved and this is uh, determined by repeated bed sampling. Then uh, if the antibody titer is high, mice are commonly boosted by injecting antigen without adjuvant intraperitoneally or intravenously three days before the fusion but two weeks after the previous immunization. So whenever the sufficient antibody titer is reached in the serum, the immunized mice is euthanized or sacrificed and spleen is removed and the spleen is used as a source for cells uh, for the antibody production for the preparation of hybridoma cell. So that is the second step screening of mice for antibody production. Now we have to prepare, prepare the myeloma cell which has to be combined with the prepared beta lymphocyte cells from the mice. So in order to prepare the myeloma cells, this is immortalized by culturing with 8 azua guanine a week before the fusion to ensure their sensitivity to hypoxanthin, aminoterin, thymidine selection medium used uh, after the cell fusion. And the cell must have high variability, viability as well as rapid growth. Now coming to fourth step, the fusion of myeloma cell with immune uh, spleen cells. So after thoroughly washing the lymphocytes, which is isolated from the mice, which is mixed with the HGPRT defective myeloma cells. So we will discuss what is HGPRT uh, enzyme, what is the role in next slide. 
The mixture is exposed to polyethylene glycol for short period of time since it is toxic and then PGE polyethylene glycol PEG is uh, removed by washing and cells are kept in the fresh media and these cells are composed of a mixture of hybridoma cell which containing fused cells as well as free myeloma cells and free lymphocyte cell. So by fusing uh, the antibody producing spleen cells which have limited lifespan with the cell derived from the immortal tumor lymphocyte cell which have a capacity of uh, immortal life will result in the formation of an hybridoma cells that is capable of unlimited growth. So here we had prepared the uh, we had isolated the beta lymphocyte cell from the immunized mice and we had prepared the myeloma cells uh, with the HGPRT defective uh, uh, myeloma cells and then we will compare this with the polyethylene glycol. Uh, so after combining the myeloma cell with the beta lymphocyte cells, we have to select the hybridoma cell by hat by uh, growth or by culturing in hat media. So, this selection is based on the inhibiting nucleotide synthesis machinery. As we all know, the mammalian cell can synthesize nucleotide by two methods that is de novo synthesis as well as salvage pathway. In de novo synthesis, this dihydrofolate is converted to tetrahydrofolate and this from by using a precursor and tetrahydrofolate nucleotide is synthesized and in case of salvage pathway from the hyposanthin by using hyposanthin guanine phosphoryl uh, phosphoribosyl transferase enzyme we can synthesize nucleotide and from this nucleotide dna is synthesized so here we will take a cell who is deficient with the HGPRT usually uh, these are uh, seen in unfused mutated myeloma cells when this unfused mutated myeloma cell is grown in a medium which containing hypoxanthin, aminopterin and thymidine or it is known as HAT medium this unfused cell cannot survive due to the inhibition of de novo synthesis for the purine nucleotide because here due to the lack of HGPRT enzyme, salvage pathway is not operative. Hence, this unfused mutated myeloma cell will die in hat media. As well as unfused normal spleen cannot grow indefinitely because of their limited lifespan. So only hybridoma cell that possess the ability of myeloma cell to grow in hat media with a functional HGPRT gene obtained from the lymphocytes and only the hybridoma cell can proliferate in hat media. But basic item unfused item myeloma cells are HGPRT in the enzymes. The HGPRT in the enzyme is pure nucleotide de novo synthesis in pure nucleotide in the enzyme. Unfused diet myeloma cell HGPRT is not the unfused diet cell is not the same as the unfused diet cell. That is the unfused diet cell is spleen cell. This is the antibody production. Produce a capacity and limited lifespan. That is the hat media. That is the life of the hat media. That is the hybridoma cell. Hybridoma cell is the capacity of the hat Hybridoma cell is lifetime life, means immortal life. That is the HGPRT gene beta lymphocyte cell. That is the hat media. That is the growth of the Okay, so for the selection of ad media or for selection of hybridoma, cell are cultured in ad media, uh, only hybridoma cell will grow and it will happen in 7 to 10 days and the hybridoma cell or the selection of single antibody producing hybridoma cell is very very important. 
So this is possible if hybridoma are isolated and so in order to get the individual monoclonal antibody the suspensions of hybridoma cell is diluted that the individual aliquid containing an average of one each cell when the hybridoma cell are grown in a regular culture media other than the had media it will produce desired antibody appo idana selection of hybridoma nu parayunnathu sadharana gadil had media thil nammal grow cheyikina samayathu fuse aayittulla adayad myeloma cell um beta lymphocyte cells gal fuse aayittundengil aa cell gal maatramana had media thil grow cheyyo ingane orikkal grow cheythu kittirikkuna hybridoma cell gal ഫർദർ കൾച്ചർ ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടി റെഗുലർ കൾച്ചർ മീഡിയത്തിൽ നമ്മൾ കൾച്ചർ ചെയ്തു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ നമുക്ക് ഡിസേർഡ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ആന്റിബോഡി പ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ഉണ്ടാക്കാൻ പറ്റും ഓക്കെ നോ കമ്മിങ് ടു ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് സ്റ്റെപ്പ് സ്ക്രീനിങ് ഓഫ് ദി പ്രൊഡക്ട് ദിസ് ഈസ് ഡൺ ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു സ്പെസിഫൈ ഓർ ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു ഐഡന്റിഫൈ ദ പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ്ഡ് മോണോക്രോണൽ ആന്റിബോഡി ഈസ് സ്പെസിഫിക് സോ കൾച്ചർ മീഡിയ ഫ്രം ഈച്ച് ഹൈബ്രിഡോമ കൾച്ചർ ഈസ് പീരിയോഡിക്കലി ടെസ്റ്റഡ് ഫോർ ദ ഡിസേർഡ് ആന്റിബോഡി സ്പെസിഫിസിറ്റി and there are two different method for the screening like elisa and radio immunoassay in both this method antibody will bind with the specific antigen and unbounded antibody and other components of the medium can be washed off and thus the hybridoma cell producing desired antibody can be identified by using this elisa as well as radio immunoassay the antibody secreted by the hybridoma cell is referred as monoclonal antibody now next step is cloning and propagation once we get uh, a single hybridoma cell we have to multiply this single hybridoma cell to get num uh, many number of hybridoma cell so this can be done by two method limiting dilution method or by soft agar method in limiting dilution method the suspension of hybridoma cell is serial, serially diluted and the aliquots of each dilution are put into micro culture well the dilution are so made that each aliquot in the well containing only one single hybrid cell this ensure the antibody produced is monoclonal and in case of soft agar method hybridoma cell are cultured in sugar soft uh, sorry soft agar or semi solid media to simultaneously grow many cell in semi solid media to form colonies so these are the two method for cloning and propagation of single hybridoma cells now next method is production of monoclonal antibody there are two method for the production of monoclonal antibody first one is in vitro tissue culture techniques and second one is in vivo animal method in case of in vitro tissue culture techniques this is a simple approach for producing monoclonal antibody in vitro to uh, grow the hybridoma cells in culture media especially the culture media which containing fetal bovine serum which is usually used as a culture media for tissue culture and which containing bovine hemoglobin immunoglobulin which can account for the substantial fraction of immunoglobulin present in the culture fluid but this have this disadvantages like the production of monoclonal antibody by in vitro tissue culture technique is very very low so we will prefer in vivo animal method in in vivo animal method yield can be increased by growing the hybrid cell as as it is in peritoneal cavity of the mice the acidic fluid contain 5 to 20 mg of monoclonal antibody per ml and this is far superior to the in vitro cultivation techniques but this also have some disadvantages like uh, the collection of monoclonal antibody from acidic fluid is associated with heavy risk of contamination by pathogenic microorganism and we have to uh, sacrifice several animals to produce monoclonal antibodies so these are the two method for the production of monoclonal antibody and 
after the production of anti uh, monoclonal antibody we have to purify the monoclonal antibody to uh, produce reliable and predictable product which are suitable for the human uh, use by uh, this can be done by removing the impurities such as host cell proteins dna adventitious and uh, endogenous viruses endotoxin aggregates and other species impurities introduced during the purification process uh, like uh, uh, leached protein a extractable from the resins uh, and filters and uh, process buffers and agents such as detergents may also employed for the virus reduction has to be removed by this purification method and these are the different steps for the purification of monoclonal antibodies first we have to centrifuge and filter in order to remove the cells and cell debris prior to the chromatography after filtration we will perform a protein a chromatography to yield highly purified product in single steps then a low ph hold for viral inactivation then addition of a polishing chromatography for the removal of product process and related impurities and viruses then additional polishing chromatography to remo uh, remove the product process related the impurity and virus then viral filtration to remove the endogenous and adventitious viruses then an ultra filtration or dia filtration finally formulated bulk drug substance and after uh, purification we have to characterize and we have to store this monoclonal antibodies so monoclonal antibodies are subjected to biochemical and biophysical characterization for desired specificity and it is also important to elucidate the monoclonal antibody for the immunoglobulin class or subclass the epitope for which the specific and number of binding site it is possess the stability of cell lines and the monoclonal antibody uh, are important stability of cell lines is very very important and the cells and the monoclonal antibody must be characterized for their ability to withstand the freezing as well as thawing the desired cells are frozen in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degree celsius at several stage of cloning and culturing so this is the different steps ആദ്യം തന്നെ നമുക്ക് വയർ മൈസിന് ആന്റിജൻ വെച്ച് ഇമ്മ്യൂണൈസ് ചെയ്യണം അങ്ങനെ മൈസിൽ ആവശ്യത്തിന് ആന്റിബോഡി പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യാൻ തുടങ്ങും അപ്പോൾ ആ ആന്റിബോഡിയുടെ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആ മൈസിലുള്ള സ്പ്ലീൻ സെല്ലിൽ നിന്ന് നമ്മൾ ബീറ്റ ലിംഫോസൈഡ് സെൽസുകൾ ഐസൊലേറ്റ് ചെയ്തെടുക്കും അതിൻ്റെ പ്രത്യേകത എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് അതിന് എച്ച് ജി പി ആർ ടി ജീൻ ഉണ്ട് അതിൽ ആന്റിബോഡി പ്രൊഡക്ഷനുള്ള കപ്പാസിറ്റിക്കുള്ള ജീനുകളുണ്ട് ഓക്കെ അതുപോലെ നമ്മുടെ ഒരു മൈലോമ സെല്ലിനെ നമ്മൾ സിന്തസിസ് ചെയ്യും അതിൽ എച്ച് ജി പി ആർ ടി ജീൻ ഇല്ലാത്തതാണ് ആന്റിബോഡി പ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ഇല്ലാത്തതാണ് അങ്ങനെ ഈ രണ്ട് സെല്ലുകളും കൂടി നമ്മൾ ഫ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യിക്കും ബൈ യൂസിങ് പോളിയത്തിലിൻ ഗ്ലൈക്കോൾ ഇപ്പൊ നമുക്ക് ഹൈബ്രിഡോമ സെല്ലുകൾ കിട്ടും പക്ഷെ നമുക്ക് കിട്ടുന്ന ഒരു മിക്സ്ചർ ഓഫ് സെല്ലാണ് അതിൽ അൺഫ്യൂസ്ഡ് ബീറ്റ ലിംഫോസൈഡ് സെല്ലുകൾ ഉണ്ടാവും അൺഫ്യൂസ്ഡ് മൈലോമ സെൽസുകൾ ഉണ്ടാവും അതുപോലെ ഹൈബ്രിഡോമ സെൽസുകൾ ഉണ്ടാവും അപ്പൊ ഇതിന് ഹൈബ്രിഡോമ സെല്ലിനെ സെപ്പറേറ്റ് ചെയ്തെടുക്കാൻ വേണ്ടി അല്ലെങ്കിൽ സെലക്ട് ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടി നമ്മൾ ഈ ഒരു മിക്സ്ചർ ഓഫ് സെൽസിനെ ഹാറ്റ് മീഡിയത്തിൽ നമ്മൾ പ്ലേസ് ചെയ്യും അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അതിനെ ഗ്രോ ചെയ്യിക്കും അപ്പോൾ അതിൽ ഹൈബ്രിഡോമ സെല്ലിൽ ഹൈബ്രിഡോമ സെല്ലിന്റെ പ്രത്യേകത എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് എച്ച് ജി പി ആർ ടി ജീനുള്ള ആന്റിബോഡി പ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ നടത്താൻ കപ്പാസിറ്റി ഉള്ള രണ്ട് ജീനും കൂടി കമ്പൈൻ ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ള സെല്ലിനെയാണ് ഹൈബ്രിഡോമ സെല്ല് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് അത് മാത്രമാണ് ഹാറ്റ് മീഡിയത്തിൽ അത് ഗ്രോ ചെയ്യുള്ളൂ ഇനി ഇങ്ങനെ ഈ ഹാറ്റ് മീഡിയത്തിൽ ഗ്രോ ചെയ്ത് നമുക്ക് കിട്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള ഹൈബ്രിഡോമ സെല്ലിനെ ഒരു കൾച്ചർ മീഡിയത്തിൽ ഹാറ്റ് മീഡിയം അല്ലാത്തൊരു ഫ്രഷ് കൾച്ചർ മീഡിയത്തിൽ നമ്മൾ അതിനെ കൾച്ചർ ചെയ്യുന്ന സമയത്ത് അത് ആന്റിബോഡി പ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ മോണോക്ലോണൽ ആന്റിബോഡി പ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ഉണ്ടാകും ഓക്കെ അങ്ങനെ ഇങ്ങനെ പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന മോണോക്ലോണൽ ആന്റിബോഡിനെ നമ്മൾ അസേ മെത്തേഡ് വഴി അതിന്റെ സ്പെസിഫിസിറ്റി ഐഡന്റിഫൈ ചെയ്യും അങ്ങനെ കിട്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള മോണോക്ലോണൽ ആന്റിബോഡിനെ അതിന്റെ നമ്പർ കൂട്ടാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് നമ്മൾ ഏതെങ്കിലും ഒരു മെത്തേഡ് ഇൻവൈട്രോ മെത്തേഡ് കൾച്ചർ മീഡിയത്തിലോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ടിഷ്യൂ കൾച്ചർ മെത്തേഡ് വഴിയോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇൻവൈബോ മെത്തേഡ് ആസ്റ്റിക് ഫ്ലൂയിഡിൽ മൈസിൽ ചെയ്തിട്ടോ നമ്മൾ മോണോക്ലോണൽ ആന്റിബോഡി പ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ നടത്തും സോ ദീസ് ആർ ദ ഡിഫറെന്റ് സ്റ്റെപ്സ് ഓഫ് ഹൈബ്രിഡോമ ടെക്നോളജി ഓക്കെ now there are different type of monoclonal antibody based on their origin of uh, their uh, antibody or beta lymphocyte cells first one is murin in this uh, uh, 
zero percentage human origin is there and all the monoclonal antibody which have murin origin will be uh, named with an suffix of O map. Okay. So, uh, second one is chimeric in which uh, we will uh, include 65 percentage of the uh, beta, uh, human or uh, beta lymphocyte cells. So, uh, we will uh, name or we will call it the uh, monoclonal antibody CMAP, S-I-M-A-P. If the origin of human uh, humanized beta lymphocyte is greater than 90 percentage, we will uh, name it as SUMAP and if it is 100 percentage, we will name it as SUMAP. So what is the importance of this type of monoclonal antibody? As the human nature increases, there will be a, a, a reduction in the chance for potential immunogenicity as well as the immunoprojection. So as the uh, murine or uh, murine origin increases, there will be chance for potential immunogenicity as well as potential uh, immune rejection. So that is the difference uh, or different types of monoclonal antibody, murine, chimeric, humanized, prim uh, primates and human. So uh, uh, the human nature could use chronic therapy to use the neurin nature could not be used to use the immune rejection and the chance of the important side of the okay. Now coming to the applications of monoclonal antibody. Applications of monoclonal antibody can be classified into four. Diagnostic application, therapeutic application, protein purification and miscellaneous application. And diagnostic application can be for the biochemical analysis as well as diagnostic imaging. And therapeutic application can be by direct usage of monoclonal antibody as therapeutic agent or monoclonal antibodies as targeting agent. So we can discuss one by one. First one is diagnostic application for the biochemical analysis. And this is uh, routinely used in radio immuno as well as enzyme linked immunosorbent assay for the detection of pregnancy as well as for the detection of cancer, different cancer like colorectal cancer, prostate specific antigen or for the prostate cancer etc. And hormonal disorder for the analysis of thyroxine and triiodothyronine etc. Then for the uh, identification or biochemical analysis of infectious diseases. Or it can be a diagnostic application can be used for the diagnostic imaging by using radio labeled monoclonal antibody for to detect myocardial infraction. Usually this is administered after 24 to 48 hours of uh, myocardial infraction by administering anti-myosin monoclonal anti labeled with the radio isotope IOD uh, indium chloride which is used to detect the myosin uh, which are produced during the myocardial infraction and it is also used for the deep vein uh, thrombosis after 4 hour of injection radioisotope labeled monoclonal antibody directed against the fibrin or platelet can be used then uh, for the detection or diagnosis of atherosclerosis as well as bacterial infection and uh, hematopoietic malignancies and uh, it can be also used for the diagnosis of different cancer uh, by using different tumor markers like carcino embryonic antigen and uh, which is used for the detection or diagnosis of colon or stomach pancreatic cancer, alpha fetoprotein for liver, germ cell and testis cancer, human chorionic conodotropin for chorionic carcinoma etc are the different examples of uh, diagnostic imaging technique for the diagnostic applications of monoclonal antibodies. Now second application of monoclonal antibody is therapeutic application. Monoclonal antibody can be used in the treatment of cancer, transplantation of bone marrow, organ, autoimmune disease, cardiovascular disease and other infectious diseases. And this monoclonal antibodies can be used as a direct as therapeutic agent as well as as a targeting agent. Now uh, what are the different examples of uh, 
monoclonal antibodies or what are the different applications of monoclonal antibody in which it is used directly as a therapeutic agent. Monoclonal antibody can be used in destroying disease causing organism, in treatment of cancer, in immunosuppression of organ transplantation, in treatment of AIDS and in treatment of autoimmune disease. All this condition we can use monoclonal antibody as a direct therapeutic agent. Monoclonal antibody can be used as a targeting agent in uh, use as an immunotoxins in drug delivery to target a specific cell in disease treatment and as well as in dissolution of blood clots. Monoclonal antibody also have some application in protein purification as well as miscellaneous application like catalytic monoclonal antibody as well as auto antibody fingerprinting. Now these are some examples of monoclonal antibody which are uh, approved by, by uh, F, FDA, Abcisimab which is a chimeric origin and it will inhibit the glycoprotein uh, 2B as well as 3A which is used for the cardiovascular diseases. So these are some examples of monoclonal antibody which are approved by uh, FDA. And these are some uh, adverse drug reaction or side effects of monoclonal antibody. These are some, there will be some uh, common side effects like allergic reactions such as itching, skin, rash, skin rashes, flu-like symptoms uh, which include chill, fatigue, fever, muscle ache and pain, nausea and diarrhea. And rarely some uh, more serious side effects like uh, infusion reactions like severe allergic like reactions can be occurred and dangerously low blood cell count can be uh, occurred due to decreasing red blood cells as, as well as white blood cells and platelet and cardiac complications certain monoclonal antibody may cause heart failure as well as risk of myocardial infraction and some monoclonal antibody can cause bleeding or some of the monoclonal antibody drug designed to stop the cancer from uh, forming new blood vessels they have been reported uh, that this medication can cause bleeding also so that is all about the hybridoma technology for the production of monoclonal antibodies in this we had discussed uh, different steps of production of monoclonal antibodies in detail and different applications of monoclonal antibodies hope it is clear thank you for watching this video